Thank you so much. All right, welcome. Can everybody hear me? Awesome. So yes, they call me Coach Q. Watching that video, whew, I got goosebumps. Totally got goosebumps. I was fortunate enough to be blessed with a great coaching staff and a great bunch of players. Truly all they were there for, they threw their egos out the door or left them at the door, and all they want to do is win. Okay, when you get a core of players and that's all they want to do, you can truly achieve something special. Um, first Canada Cup win since 2012, so truly proud of that. Um, I did bring three little helpers here today. What we are covering is identifying and correcting swing deficiencies. Okay, the way I put, the, put together this um, presentation, goals of the presentation, to understand the components of the swing, okay, and to be able to correct them. All right, um, we're gonna get through some topics. The way I've put this presentation together is I've broken them down into topics. So we have the domino effect, absolutes of a stance, okay, then we'll get into the components of the swing, the loading portion or loading phase, the linear, the stride, okay, separation, launch position, as well as your rotation, okay, and towards the end of the presentation, we'll cover um, pitch recognition and some off-speed drills, okay? What you're going to get with every topic that we cover, you're going to get some key points, common faults in that area, in those areas, as well as drills on how to fix them, okay? Everybody with me? All right, so before we actually get started, that was a wonderful little introduction. Thank you, Dirk, um, but I got something to say. You young guys better listen to me. Baseball Ontario knows what they were doing. They put the best guy on, that's me, okay? And I'm gonna tell you why. I was a lousy ball player. You hear me? I was a lousy ball player. No matter what I accomplished, I couldn't make the Montreal Expos. Now for you young guys who don't know the Expos, they're now the Washington Nationals. I couldn't make them. I was never drafted. Never played a day of professional baseball. So what I'm trying to get across is you don't have to be a great player to coach. Do you understand that? But by coming to these clinics, doing the NCCP, picking up something here and picking up something there, hey, you'll be able to do it. Don't get it wrong. I've lost more games than anybody. Okay, thank God they don't keep a record. But if you check my record, I've lost more games than anybody. Okay, which means to tell you what? I've been able to handle losing. Got to be able to handle losing in this game, okay? Us as coaches, we have to understand we are coaching the toughest team game of all. And it's the toughest game to play. It's a negative game. It's a negative game. It's frustrating. A game of failure. Embarrassment. You ever have one of those kids, they throw the ball away, right? Or they boot a ground ball and they look in their glove like it's the glove's fault. Okay, or maybe they threw a ball away and they say, my bad. Well, everybody in the ballpark knows it's your fault, I tell you. Right, shut your hell up and get ready for the next one. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you guys, you have to understand, let's be positive. Okay, you're coaching a negative game, it's the greatest game, and you've got to be positive. Okay, you guys with me on that? All right, getting into the presentation, here we go. Oops. All right, so talking about the domino effect. Imagine you had a row of dominoes, okay? You push the first domino over, provides energy into the next, provides ener energy into the next, and they all fall in sequence. That's what we want. That is our goal as a hitter. We want to work from the ground up. Okay? Our biggest muscles in our body, our biggest engine in our body is our legs. Okay? The second biggest engine in our body is our core. But it's not an active participant unless we make it so. Okay? Through upper body resistance with the lower body's rotation. It's the only way we can activate and incorporate our core. Okay? When we're looking at swing faults and mechanical breakdowns, imagine that row of dominoes. If there's an area where there's a mechanical fault, I'm going to have to restart that energy. Okay? When I restart that energy, I've lost all previous energy. 
Okay, understood? So thinking about a swing, if I'm in a game and I stop my swing, I've done my stride and everything, and I stop, I've actually lost my legs, lost my kinetic energy, kinetic flow, and I am firing from smaller, weaker, weaker muscles of the upper body. Okay? Fair enough? Understood? All right. Absolutes of a stance. Doesn't really matter how your players stand, okay? Doesn't really matter at all. I know at the younger levels, we will try to uh, minimize or eliminate some of the movement, okay? But for the most part, a stance is just a starting point. Let's not get too caught up in how someone is standing, okay? We've all seen Mickey Tittleton, okay? We've all seen Julio Franco, okay? Everybody has their own unique style. One key part or one key point to the stance is that you have your feet parallel to the plate, okay? Especially at the younger levels. Have your feet parallel to home plate, okay? Super important. Number two, absolute number two, your back foot must be straight or slightly pigeon-toed. Reason being is, physiologically, we are closing our hips. We know the power portion of the swing, it comes through the legs, comes through the ground legs and up into the core, so the power portion comes through the hips, okay? With our foot pigeon-toed, physiolo physiologically, we've got energy, kinetic energy stored in our hips and legs, okay? Absolute number three is our back knee. Now, the back knee has to stay inside the ankle, but not too far inside the ankle, okay? Huge. When we start talking about the linear portion and the stride, I can't control my stride when my knee is too far inside my ankle. When my knee is inside my ankle but close to my ankle, I'm able to balance, and I'm controlling the stride. I'm not just falling forward. What if my timing is off? I'm done as a hitter, okay? So the back knee has to be inside the ankle slightly, okay? Can everybody stand up for me? This is going to be a little interactive part of it. I want you to take whatever, however you stand, your back foot. Imagine you're a hitter, your back foot, and I want you to take your back foot and put it on the instep of your front foot. So your feet are creating a T. So back foot turned in on the instep of your front foot. Everybody feel that energy in the back side? Okay, totally what we want. We have preset, preloaded some energy in that back hip. Now just release your upper body and what happens? Release that front leg, what happens? You rotate naturally, don't you? Okay, have a seat. So when it comes to our stance, we can preset and preload some energy, which is what we're trying to do. Okay, and that energy is gonna allow us to rotate and help us get to rotate towards the field, okay? Uh, posture, absolute number four, posture. Now we want to be slightly chin over the toes, but we don't want to have excess, excessive bend. Reason being, think of the figure skater, when they go and spin in the air, they do one of those triple axles spin in the air, arms are close to their body, and they're tall, because we rotate fastest when we're tallest. Pitches belt high, usually end up in the upper deck. The hardest pitch to hit for a hitter Think about where you tell your pitchers to pitch most players, low and outside. Reason being, more bend, more tilt, our rotational speeds are not as fast. Okay? That's why we want our pitchers live down in the zone. Okay? Don't leave them belt high. Belt high, celebrate and elevate. Elevate and celebrate. You ever heard that term before? Absolute number five is your eyes. Both of them should be level and on the pitcher. Okay? Level and on the pitcher. No sideways heads, no peeking out of one eye. Okay, super important. Both eyes level and on the pitcher. Last one. Absolute number six. Gripping the bat. The bat must be used as a whip. Okay? If I line the bat up or grip it with my palms, okay, in the back of my hands, what actually happens is I've locked up my wrists and my elbows flared up. Okay? I can't swing. I cannot use that as a whip. So, something that the little guys do is they hold the bat, and if their fingers are parallel to one another, they're in good shape, okay? So, you have your punching knuckles, and you have your door-knocking knuckles. They, you never want door-knocking knuckles or punching knuckles lined up, and they used to teach us, line up your door-knocking knuckles. 
But even that's a little uncomfortable. If you see my wrists, they're bent. Okay, they're up, also locked up. So the true way of holding the bat is somewhere in between your door knocking knuckles and your punching knuckles. As long as your fingers are parallel to one another, you're in good shape. Okay? Too many kids curl that top hand over. Cool? You guys with me? All right. Okay. Removing slack. So we're now getting into the components of the swing, the phases of the swing. We just established within our stance, I can have this coil around my rear leg, okay? I have energy stored in my legs. Well, what I'm trying to do now with my upper body is remove some slack. So you have your Beverly Hills Cop, 1982, 84, uh, crappy blue Chevy Nova. It's broken down, okay? And you got a tow truck, gotta get a tow truck. Tow truck comes along, hooks on a chain. That chain is loose. There's slack in that chain. My crappy blue Chevy Nova cannot get pulled away until that slack is removed. So once the tow truck starts pulling away, the chain gets tight, and then both cards can advance. That's what we're trying to do with our upper body. It's about launch quickness. You ever heard that term before? Launch quickness? We've heard launch angle. Launch quickness is when my brain has decided, yes, now i got to swing that pitch. I should be able to swing that pitch. If there's any slack or any other movement that I have to get to before I can swing, the ball's by me. I'm done. So launch quickness is what is essential for any good hitter. When I'm ready to swing, boom, I should be able to hit that ball. Okay, if my hands are here and I haven't loaded, well, then that's slack. Ball's by me. Okay? So we are trying to remove slack from the upper body. We've got coil in our legs. Remove slack in the upper body. Can I get one volunteer, uh, John Marco? Come on up, buddy. Ten you, John Marco, everybody. There you go. What's up, dude? Okay. So, uh, just get in your stance. Imagine the pitcher straight ahead. Yeah. Okay, and all I want you to do is load for me. Just load for me. Okay, keep doing it. Yep. This is a load. Key points to the load. This back elbow has to go backwards. Hit my hand. Yep. Okay. Stay like that for a sec. Once he's loaded, what's actually happening, his obliques, his core, they're all tightened up. He's removed slack in his swing. Okay. He's in a powerful, powerful position right here. If he had to swing it, he can swing right away. Okay. So what we do, a couple of drills we do. Have a seat, buddy. Yep. Same way, the pitcher straight ahead. You want your feet out this way. No, this way. Yep. Same thing. Go ahead and load. So we've isolated his upper body. Okay? A key point would be if the pitcher is straight ahead, you don't see his elbow, do you? Guys in the front row. Gary, you don't see his elbow, do you? Load. You see his elbow. See how it peaked out a bit? That's what you want. That's what you're looking for. Okay? So just a, a, an easy little constraint drill. Keep going, buddy is load and load we talk about the scap muscle so the muscle in the back of your the scap muscle okay we're trying to tighten that up cool awesome okay you're gonna stay up here buddy we're gonna do some drills okay common faults in this area improper elbow now you're gonna face like the pitcher is that way and you load again improper elbow where is his elbow located right now Elbow is in line with his shoulder. Most kids, the bats are too heavy for them. So they got weak elbows. Okay, so if he's loading here, do a load from here. Yeah. Okay, he's actually lo loading his lower scap. We want the high scap, not the low scap. Okay, think about where I would punch somebody. It's right in there. Elbow is in line with my shoulder and hands. I'm going to do this. Okay, your elbow will slot once you're ready to launch the bat. Okay. Overloading. Turn this way as if the pitcher's this way. Overloading is when the player turns too much. Okay, and he really hides his hands and his vision from the pitcher. So it's important when you're working with guys like this, young guys, stay with their eyes on the pitcher. Okay, and you're loading from there. Go ahead a little bit. Load. Okay, just a bit. It's a small movement. Okay, I'll show this way again. Same thing. Just keep loading. Yep. 
It's a small movement. How much are his hands moving? Okay, not moving very much at all. Loading the hands. When I was growing up, they used to tell us, load your hands. So keep doing it. This is what we would do back in the day. Right? We would get our hands away from our body. Is that a strong position? If my arms are extended, am I ever in a strong position? Never. Okay, so with guys like this, I don't mind them turning their shoulders a little bit, but as long as they can keep the vision on the pitcher. Okay? Young like this, they might not be able to activate that scat. If I bring in the other two older guys, they'll totally be able to do it. Okay? Arm bar. So not only do we load the hands, some kids bar out this bottom hand. Okay? You'll see that a lot as well. Again, it's a disconnection. You're weak from your body. Okay? We want to be tight and close, just like the figure skater. When we rotate and swing, we want to be close to our body. This is obviously not close to our body. Okay? So we had the seated load drill where we were sitting down and doing it. We have the, also the wall drills. Come back here. Get in your stance. Pitcher is this way. There you go. So up against the wall. Any wall matters. I used my hand at first. Okay? He's going to load and try to get his hand or, or his elbow to touch the wall. Okay? Simple little drill for young guys. Okay? Simple, simple, simple. All right. I'm going to go up to a T. A T drill that we like to use is where we set up in our stance, but you're going to have your feet close together. Feet together. Yep. Feet together, and he's going to put his hands in the middle of his body. Straight in the middle. Yep. So when he actually goes to hit this ball, he's going to have to load, and he's also going to have to stride. Okay, so it's, a, it's a, a drill focused more on the loading aspect of the swing. Go ahead, buddy. Okay, nice job. Same thing. His hands in the middle of the body. Load and go. Good man. Okay, any questions? You guys good? We'll have questions later on for sure. All right, arm bar. One drill we can do for arm bar, regular stance. So that's the kid who bars out that bottom hand. Okay, straighten that bottom hand. Any soft, uh, deflated ball, keep it there. Now when he does load, do your load, he cannot arm bar. Straighten out that arm, like do it incorrectly. The ball falls out. So if he's doing the load properly, hold it. Yep. All day. That's how you do it. Okay, simple fix, especially with the young guys. We're not trying to challenge their brains too much with key points and information. Throw them in a drill like this, explain a couple concepts to him, he'll be all right. Okay, you guys with me? All right, John Markle, thanks, buddy. Okay, moving on to the linear component of the swing. Can I have uh, E? Come on up, E. Ladies and gentlemen, 15U, E tan. Boy, pitcher is straight ahead. Pitcher is this way. Face the crowd. Just do your stride, big guy. Stride, 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 stride. Key points to the stride. So when we're striding the linear portion of the swing, we want to have the head, the belly button, and the back knee move forward. Okay, super important. The whole movement forward is controlled by the back knee. Okay. Do me a favor and lunge out with the front foot and stay. No, nope, like that. Most of your kids will do this. Okay, they disconnected their hip or hip and knee. Okay, lunging out to the ball. If they control the stride with the back leg and the back knee, they won't stride that big. They will not lunge out to the ball. When we abduct this muscle, we've lost energy. So when we do our stride, we want that back knee to pinch in. It's pushing my front leg, and my body forward. Okay, super important. Do not abduct that muscle. Don't abduct it. If you do that, you're pushing forward. Okay? During the stride, keep going, bud. Your back foot, during the stride, once he lifts up that front foot, this back foot must be straight or flat. Flat and even. Okay, and we'll talk about some of the common faults, striding towards the plate or stepping in the bucket. Okay, all happens because of the back foot. Your weight distribution should be 50-50 or slightly 60-40 on the back side. Okay? 50-50 weight distribution 
or 60-40 on the backside. When you land your front foot, it's got to be straight, okay? Parallel to the plate. Whether you start in an open stance, a closed stance, once you land your front foot, it has to be in a straight line, okay? Common faults we find. People who stride away from the plate. Stepping in the bucket. Stepping in the bucket is when the front foot goes in foul territory, okay? If they, if our hitters, once they lift that, their stride foot, if they get weight on the heel, if you get weight on your heels, you're going to go backwards. You get weight on your toes, you're going towards the plate. So a lot of that is controlled by having your back foot flat and even as you lift your leg to stride. It has to be flat and even. Weight on the toes, you're falling towards the plate. Weight on your heels, you're going into foul territory. And lunging, we talked about when you abduct this muscle. Lunge again. Right? He's done it correct so many times he can't even do it lunge anymore. Good man. Okay. Um, some of the drills we do. We'll do a constraint drill where we have no upper body movement. Go ahead and that. This is a good one. It gives them a good visual. We want the bat directly on the pitcher the whole time. Okay. Go ahead. Stride, stride, stride. Make sure you control it with your backside. Good job. Okay. Drills we can do off the tee. We have the Happy Gilmore. I'm sure everybody knows this one by now. So obviously walking into the plate, walking up to the tee. He's practicing that linear portion of the swing. It's going to help his direction, help him stay in a straight line. Nice job. Skater hop. A skater hop is where you hop forward, back, and swing. Hop forward, hop back, swing. Again, linear portion of the swing. Okay? The Babe Ruth drill. Touch yourself with the ball. Babe Ruth drills where your feet are together. Okay, Babe Ruth started with his feet pretty much side by side, pretty much close together. Okay, so we're controlling that big stride all the way out to a swing. Okay. One more time, dude. Nice. Okay, Luca, want to come up, buddy? Let's give it up for Luca. 14U. All right. Now we're getting into the separation phase of the swing. Separation. What is separation? We hear these terms. We're not sort of sure what the hell they mean. Okay. We talked about earlier in the domino effect. Legs are the first biggest engine. Second biggest engine is the core. But it's not an active participant unless we make it so. That's separation. What we're trying to do is separate our hips and our shoulders. Hips and shoulders. Back in the day when we used to do the twist, I'm not that old, but my parents, they used to do the twist. Okay, you are separating. That's hip-shoulder separation. What it does with your stomach is tighten it up. Okay, get your core and it squeezes it, tightens it up. Okay, what it's doing is building or storing elastic energy. Elastic energy. And the more that we can separate our hips and our shoulders, the more stored energy we get in our core, which means the faster our bat speed will be. Okay, that's the concept of separation, okay? Some of the common faults we see in this area. Okay, just get in your, uh, just do it for me, the launch position stuff. Okay, so what most kids will do is they'll land with the closed front foot. Okay, actually turn where the pitcher's straight. Closed front foot. If we land on a closed front foot, do you think there's much separation going on in the core? There could be more, okay? If you see your guys land with somewhat of a 45 degree front foot, don't freak out, okay? It's a byproduct of them trying to clear the hips with the shoulders lagging behind, okay? Totally okay. If they land closed, they're clearly not creating as much stretch in that oblique, okay? Super important when it comes to the uh, separation portion of the swing. Okay, straight ahead. 
late loading. Late loading. Okay, that's when they don't remove slack. Okay, you didn't remove slack in time. Okay? So not removing slack is literally, like we talked about with the loading phase, not loading our scat muscle. Okay? When you unload too soon, with some hitters, they don't keep that resistance on the backside. And when they land their front foot, you'll see the hands drop, the hands low, elbows low. Okay? They're unable to, they're not loading soon enough. So we have the kids that don't get back enough, and we have the kids who don't load soon enough. Okay? Uh, drill that we do. Next, we'll just do it with your bat. Hold your bat up. People use a PVC pipe usually. Um, imagine this was straight into the ground. I'm going to hold it just for uh, demonstration purposes. Okay, but what he's going to do is just rotate his hips. Go ahead. I'm going to hold his bat. Go, yep, keep doing it. Okay, he's creating separation every time he turns. Okay, we can actually do this holding a fence, holding a pole. Okay, I can come over here and literally hold on to this pole and do the same thing. Okay, getting your kids to understand what it feels like to separate hips and shoulders. Okay. Uh, drills that we do, set up to the T-Buddy. We are going to do that exact drill off a tee. So he's going to rotate his hips twice, then he's going to hit the ball. Go ahead, once, twice, and swing. Do it one more time for me. Once, twice, swing. Okay, you guys with me? Okay, so we can do a drill, a constraint drill. Hold the bat. So you're going to load. So we're actually going to see this bat move. The first drill when we were doing stride, the bat stayed right on the pitcher. This time you'll actually see this bat move with his stride. So he's going to load and stride. Go ahead. Yep. Do it again. Good job. With the young guys, like John Markle's age, I'll actually make them load first, then stride. Go ahead. Okay. And I'll tell them, when you load... You have to hold this load through your stride. It can't come with your stride. It cannot come with the stride. It has to stay resisted. Okay? Cool? You guys with me? All right. Uh, bring up John Markle. Actually, no, sorry, Ethan. 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 Launch position. When it comes to the launch position... It's exactly what it means. We are launching the swing. Okay? Launching the swing. Most amateurs have a breakdown in this area. So get to your launch position. Key points within the launch position is or are elbow in line with shoulders. Okay? Weight distribution 50 50 or 60 40. That slight open of the front foot. The knee is in line with the hip. Knee in line with the hip. Super important. I'll say it again, knee in line with hip, okay? Last thing is our barrel. Barrel is above the head, okay? We want the knob of the, of the bat to be at the catcher's feet, okay? So if I was the catcher, knob is right at my feet. Most kids, what they'll do is bat wrap, okay? So common faults in this area, you have the hands above the shoulder. If the hands are above the shoulder, they're going to create too deep or too steep of an angle when they hit the ball, okay? If the hands are too low, obviously we're susceptible to the higher pitch, okay? And we'll actually create more of a loopy swing. And then the bat wrap, where the bat gets too far around their uh, head. It's just going to take way too long for this barrel to get to the zone, okay? Drills we do for this would be swinging from your launch position. So he's going to do the whole setup, but he's actually going to pause at launch position. So we can check them out. Is everything good? Everything looks right? Go ahead. Swing. Okay. So we'll do this a bunch of times. Getting them to swing from launch position. Okay. Totally as a coach, I can break down and help them out. Okay. Rotation. So, rotation phase. We're actually swinging the bat. 
This is where you actually swing the bat. It's the unloading of the kinetic energy, unloading of the separation, okay? We are trying to keep the hands close to the back shoulder as long as possible. We are trying to keep the hands close to the back shoulder as long as possible, up into slightly before contact. Think about it. Am I making a muscle? If I do this, did I make a muscle? No. So I need to stay near my back shoulder and rotate my body to contact. Okay? Hit a couple balls for me. Okay, rotating to contact. Understand this. The linear portion of the swing, five minutes, really? That's it. The linear portion of the swing and the rotational portion of the swing, they never mix. They never mix. So now that he's doing his rotational aspect, his head needs to stay perfectly still. Okay? So during the rotational phase, the head stays completely still. Hold your finish for me. If you can, stay there. Also, when it comes to contact or rotational phase, the front leg needs to be straight. I know it's slightly bent there. He's like off balance because I warned him at the last time. Reset, do another one. Hold your finish at the end. So you want that front knee to stiffen out upon contact. And what you'll see with some guy's back foot, think of Bryce Harper, the back foot jumps off the ground. When I was growing up, they said squish the bug. And then they said get to the toe. Now they're saying jump over the bug. Okay? It's a byproduct of proper rotation. Don't freak out if their foot comes off the ground. Freak out if they're pushing their foot off the ground. But don't freak out if they rotate and that foot slightly just comes off the ground. Okay, it's jumping over the little bug. Okay? You want your arms bent at contact? Just show the contact position. Optimally, we want our arms 90 degrees, both of them, at contact. It's not always going to happen, but optimally, yes, that's what we want. Both arms 90 degrees at contact. Matching the plane of the pitch... Big controversy. When I grew up, they were telling us swing down on the ball. Everybody had to swing down on the ball. But we understand now, through science, science has proven that the pitcher is on a mound and that the ball is always coming in downhill. Balls are always coming in downhill and the catcher squats. If I swing down on the ball, my intersection point is small. If I match the plane of the pitch, I can hit the ball here, 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 here. I can foul it off, be out in front and hit it perfectly. I have more chance to hit the ball, scientifically proven. Okay, so don't get too carried away with the uh, launch angle stuff. If your kid hits a line drive, he created proper launch angle. He did everything correctly. Okay, so don't freak out with that stuff. Common faults in this area, bat drag. Just do like a slow swing. So bat drag is literally where the elbow gets underneath the hands. Again, a weak position, and you're going to see too much of a loopy swing. Okay, bat drag where the elbow gets in front of your hands. Okay, it should be in line with your hands. There we go. Okay, casting, so during the rotational phase, casting when the arms get away from our body. And then there's obviously the arm bar where we get to contact and the front arm is barred out, it's straight. Okay, so drills we do are face the pitcher drill. This one we're actually not going to hit into the screen. Why don't you set up like pitchers out here? Pitcher straight ahead. We'll do this what's called face the pitcher drill. Okay, so his hips are facing the target, his belly button facing the target. Load for me. So he actually practices a load. Okay, and then he's going to do some swings. Come in. Nice job. One more. Okay, we have what's called a 45 degree angle, so exact same drill except his feet are on a 45. Okay, he has to load up and swing. Load up and swing. Now we have the no stride drill, so now his feet are parallel to home plate. The no stride drill, so up on the heel, he's going to curl that heel and swing. It's a no stride, he's not picking up his foot to stride. Coil and uncoil. Load and unload. Okay, we also have a drill that we do called contact drill, where I would sit here, he can do it off a tee, he can do a soft toss, he can do a front toss, but he's literally just trying to make contact, and he's going to try to pause at contact. 
So he's pausing at contact, just trying to hit just like a mini line drive, and we're trying to make sure that both arms are bent at contact. Okay? So we can do that off a tee, off soft toss, all good. Okay? Pitch recognition. John Marco, come up, buddy. Thank you, sir. So when it comes to pitch recognition, we can do some drills. Obviously, we all know what a two-seam and a four-seam is. Okay, so when it comes to pitch recognition, we're trying to get our hitters to understand what a two-seam and a four-seam is. Okay, so they can be in their stance. Now, this has nothing to do with their mechanics. Absolutely nothing to do with their mechanics. I will sit here, and obviously, I don't have a two-seam or a four-seam on this ball, but I can do it like that. Okay, so we have colors. Okay, I can throw it like this and still be a two-seam. Okay, because you see two colors. If I flip it like this, like a four-seam, you sort of see just yellow. Okay, two seam, you'll see two actual black and yellow. Okay, so what's happening with the hitter is they're going to call out what pitch they see. So at front toss, soft toss, whatever it is, I'll toss him some balls, and he'll literally hit it and say, two seam. Then he'll hit the next one, four seam. Okay, we're getting him to acknowledge visually, pick up the pitch. Okay, another drill we can do is literally split the plate into half. Inner half, outer half. And then we toss balls to them. They can only hit balls either on the inner half or the other half. We usually do it in positive or negative counts. It's a positive count, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 1, positive counts. We're looking middle to middle in, okay? When they get to two strikes, we sort of have to cover the whole plate, okay, where we would look more middle outside, okay? One more thing. Last thing, off-speed pitches. So, off the tee, buddy. So you're going to do a swing off the tee, but you're going to do a pause, a slight pause. So you're going to do your whole mechanic, slight pause, then swing. Go ahead. Yeah. So when it comes to an off-speed pitch, there is a slight hesitation in the swing. No pause, like no actual stop, but a slight hesitation. So we can do that off the tee, slight pause. We can actually do this as a command drill. Okay, so I'm either going to say fast or off. If I say fast, land your foot and go like it's a fastball. If I say off, hesitate. Command drill. He's got to go on my command. When he starts his motion, I'll either say fastball or off speed. Ready? Fast. All right, next one. Off. Okay, where he's understanding that command. Okay. Um, the two plate drill, we can do this as soft toss, front toss, whatnot. But it's literally, he'll take a swing from here. Okay, imagine we had a home plate. He'll take a swing from here. He'll back up. Take a swing from here. What pitch would this resemble up here? Fastball or off speed? Fastball. Back here, off speed. Okay, so a two plate timing drill. Okay, getting young ones to understand fastballs and that slight hesitation. The last drill we're going to do is a soft toss, double clutch. Okay, so... It's literally soft toss, don't swing. So I can toss it, just catch this ball. Normal soft toss, yeah. And then I can do soft toss, double clutch. So fake it and then throw it. Okay, you ready to hit one? Hit two. Fastball. That boy. Off speed. Fake it, then toss it. Okay? Good job, buddy. I hope you guys enjoyed it. That's the uh, presentation for this afternoon. Please thank my three little young guys.